Howdy, lads and lassies. Welcome back to the channel, y'all. This is for my resident hero people. Okay, resident hero, that's what that tattoo is right here. Okay, that's my old rock band. And after 13 years, we got together and we played a show and we did a thing. Much more of that. So this is kind of for the Resident Hero fans out there. And if some of you guys who are interested in knowing that I used to be a musician for a long time, I played with a lot of people. A lot of people you probably know. Played on a lot of records. People you probably know. Uh, I was like a ghost player on a lot of records. Anyway, did a lot of cool things like that. But more importantly, I had this amazing band called Resident Hero. I also played with a guy named Rocco DeLuca. I had a band called Decatry I was in for a while too that was on Atlantic. It, it, anyway, rock and roll died, but it's alive again. And my band just got back together. So we're playing. So this is kind of for those musicians. Now, first and foremost, this is my father's signature guitar with Taylor guitars. That's my dad right there. My dad is a bluegrass musician, amazing uh, acoustic guitar player. I'm gonna show you guys my basses. These are my basses. Here they are, right here. These are my three primary basses that are still left in my fleet. I have owned a lot of basses. I had two James Tylers, I had a Padula fretless, I had a Rickenbacker, I had a Hoffner, I had two Gibson Thunderbirds, I had a Guild hollow body. Uh, what else did I have? I had a Music Man Stingray, I had a fretless Jazz. Anyway, they're all gone. Um, they're all gone. And this is what's left over. So here they are. This was my very first bass I ever owned, right here. This is a 1973 Fender P bass that I had routed out and I put a jazz bass pickup in. So if you look closely here at the 12th fret right here, it shaved down to a jazz neck. The person who previously owned this bass before I got it when I was a very young whippersnapper uh, was a female. and. This was her bass and she gave it to me and I taught myself how to play bass. And uh, that's, that's, you know, that's, that's the story. I've had this guy, it's a, it sounds amazing. Um, and it's all original except for the, this pickup right here, which Seymour Duncan wound for me. Uh, I met Seymour, so there was a guitar player named Jerry Swallow, world famous guitar player from back in the day. Tanya Tucker, he was a guitar player of the year in Nashville. He was like a mentor to me and I played a lot with him when I was very young. And um, when he passed away from brain cancer at the funeral, I met Seymour Duncan and we became friends and Seymour made me this pickup for this bass. It's volume, volume, tone. It has a copper pick guard because I broke the original uh, tortoise pick guard on there. Or no, it was a black pick guard I had on here. I broke that. And then I ended up putting a badass bass bridge in it because I used to do a lot of recording and I needed the uh, intonation to be there and to be good. Now, my favorite part of this bass I just discovered and remembered, uh, this bass was with my friend Josh Auer from the band PAX 217. He's now a big session guy in Nashville, uh, but he used to have a killer rock band called PAX 217. And we were friends when uh, here in Orange County. But I was playing a show, and there used to be my favorite band growing up was a band called Mother Tongue. If you haven't heard of Mother Tongue, I just found out they were on Spotify. Go check them out. But Davo was the bass player, and he was also an actor in some movies and things like that too. But Mother Tongue inspired like Rage Against the Machine, the Chili Peppers. Like I've been to Mother Tongue shows and seen like. Morella or John Fushante and you know Tim from Rage and like some other guys. So really influential band back in the days, and I used to love them. And he was my favorite bass player growing up. And I'm playing at the Viper Room with Resident Hero, and I look down, and there's Davo, and he's just sitting there with his arms crossed, just looking up at me, and I like flipped out. Um. So afterwards, he signed my bass, and you can't really see it here too well, but I'll show you guys. I'll try to, to show it to you here, but it says, music is blood. To Luke from Devo. 
And then he put something else here, bass lower, I think is what he originally wrote. Cause I used to play with my bass a lot higher and I was like, I guess I'm gonna lower my bass. But when I used to, you Resident Hero fans out there, when I used to sign autographs on all the CDs, I used to always write music is blood. And there's people out there with like that tattooed on them with the RH heart, which I love hearing those stories and seeing that. But that's where this came from. Dave wrote that on this space, my first space, and I never forgot it. And uh, I, I, I kind of stole it from him. But that's where the music is blood comes from for you RH fans out there. My second bass here, I bought this bass at a pawn shop in Montana for $1,000. This is a 1966 jazz bass, Fender jazz bass, custom color with the custom color headstock. The black on black. The only things I've done to it, this, these are the original pickups, pots, everything. The only thing I've done to it is I put a badass bass bridge in it because I did a lot of recording with this bass and uh, I needed the intonation to be on. Uh, this bass was plucked by Mike Lowell, as was this bass, um, but he plucked this bass for me when we were on tour. We were up in Seattle and we stopped off at his shop and he saw this and he was just like, dude, let me pluck it. And he had a pluck machine, he stuck it in there for me. Um, all the wear and tear on this bass is all from me. I, I did all these idiotic dings and and this wear mark, this is all from me. Uh, the bass was in immaculate condition when I got it. I used to wear a lot of belt buckles. That's what happened here and here, here. But um, if you look at my newer bass here, you'll see pretty much kind of the same wear areas um, from me playing. But this bass, was owned by the great Joe Osborne, who was a famous uh, session player back in the days. And he played with, he's played on hundreds of records uh, from, like I found him from this old album called America. This band called America, they did Horse With No Name was their famous song, but the bass playing on that album is, it's unbelievable. This was his bass. And I found out because my neighbor used to be an old session guy as well. And he looked at it and said, man, Joe used to have a bass like that. And I gave him the serial number and he checked it and it was Joe Osborne's bass. This bass was made for Joe Osborne. I met Joe Osborne at NAMM show years later. I offered the bass back to him. He said, hey man, I'm good, thanks though. You know, And he's like, keep playing it, keep enjoying it. So I have one of Joe Osborne's Fender Jazz basses and it's amazing. It's, it's one of the most expensive possessions I have and one of my most prized possessions, but I love this bass. I continue to play it today. Uh, you'll see these pit guards on here. For those of you that watch Resident Hero, this is how I play. I rest my fingers here and uh, it gives me kind of a stable platform to hold on to and I like hitting the strings right there. Um, all these just got fresh strings on them, except this one, because I just broke the B string and Amazon sent me the wrong set of strings, but I use Elixir heavy gauge uh, stainless steel strings for those of you who care about that stuff. Anyway, this is my baby. Those of you Resident Hero fans out there, this is the bass I always had on me. I've recorded a bunch of albums with this bass. All my work with uh, producer Mark Indert was with this bass. He only wanted this specific bass, and I had a ton of basses back then, but this is what he wanted me to bring and it just sounds amazing. But this is my Mike Lowell five string uh, bass and I, it's, it's hammered. Yeah, I didn't, you know, this is from Jay's cymbals right here. Um, hip shot ultralight tuners. Um, going down, it's a, uh, it's a bird's eye maple fretboard with the block inlay because uh, so basically what I did was I had a James Tyler bass and I had this Fender bass. I was like, I want the bass to look like this, but sound like this. So I got together with Mike Lowell and we designed this whole system here. But these are Seymour Duncan pickups that I got from him. But this is a 18 volt Demeter active preamp. And back then, not a lot of people were doing 18 volt preamps, um, but I loved the sound from the the James Tyler, and I, I wanted that in this. So that's what we put in here. Um, it's got a little fine crack right here 
I don't know if you can see it. Hip shot bridge is amazing, but I did do a B string through the body. So, oh, let me do it this way. The B string goes through the body here. Um, and it's a 35 scale bass because I want that B string as tight as possible because I play it and I play very hard. I had the old music is blood there. It's kind of worn off now, but um, the, uh, the back here is in, in okay shape. It's definitely seen its wear, but I used to break these battery covers back in the day. So I just started using duct tape and I just rip it off and put new tape on every time I change out the, uh, the batteries. So this is my, uh, my old Mike Lowell bass. It's a bit dinged up, but you know, it's still, it's still rocking. I tried these strings out, I hate them. I'm going back to my Elixir uh, medium heavy strings and that is a 35 to 50. So I do a 135 and then a 50 on the bottom. Um, I think it's a 105. Back in the day, I was with Elixir and Elixir used to give me strings, but um, let's go check out the, uh, the rig. So here we are outside in my garage, wife's new car. This thing is so sick, my motorcycle. Anyway, this is my rig, and this is a rig I've had for a very long time, and it still sounds better than anything else that I'm seeing new out there. So here it is, it is it's my old touring rig. It is the Ashdown Evo 900. I also have a 500 head that's at my dad's house. I need to go get it. But this is the one I toured with and I recorded with the 500. Uh, that is going into an Aguilar 412 cab. Uh, love, love, love this cab. Not as good as the old Bergantino cabs I used to have, but that's a whole different story. I have the uh, Sennheiser wireless, uh, the ED, or, or sorry, EW550. Uh, wireless. I used to have two packs, one for both bases, um, and then cork tuner and a Furman power conditioner. This is a big deal, especially in some of them. Like uh, I can remember, House of Blues, New Orleans had really wacky power. This thing saved my tush. A couple guys blew some amps that day, uh, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> so down to my effects. So here. Is, so this used to be my enormous, whoop, let me move this. This used to be my enormous effects pedal board right here. And I have a huge ground control switching system in it and I could switch and do everything. And you know, maybe someday that'll come back, hopefully. If we go on tour again, that whole thing will get rebuilt. But I kind of did a downsize thing here because uh, you know, I just, uh, it's, it's what I wanted to do this time, this go around. So why isn't this working? That's not, that's troublesome to say the least. There we go. Um, so here, here is the pedals I currently have and am using. Uh, first and foremost, this is my Seymour Duncan Twin Tube. This is the best bass drive pedal for me on the planet. Um, I love, love, love this thing and it sounds amazing. Uh, the Time Machine uh, Boost. I primarily use that on my passive basses. It kind of gives them that little extra, little extra oomph. Uh, kind of gives me also that sort of like, like rage against the machine sound type of thing. Um, and then going down, I have the micro pog, uh, which I use to make weird noises and stuff like that. I have a bass big muff, hardly ever use this. There was one song, uh, Life in Hell, that I use that on, but live, I, I don't really feel like I need it. With the uh, with the Seymour Duncan here, I have a lead and a rhythm channel. So rhythm is pretty much my always on 90% of the time with Resident Hero. 
uh, except for songs like Happy Without Me, Home, where I kind of want clean and then bump up to a drive. Um, but the lead is when I start, you know, making noise. So uh, it rarely comes out, but sometimes it does. And then here I have the uh, Full Tone uh, Music Products Chorus Flanger, Coral Flange, I think is what it's called. And then I have a Dunlop Bass Wall. I use this. I use this a lot actually, uh, mainly to make sounds um, and just kind of do weird things with it. Uh, then I do have a tuner. I used to run this and I had a digital delay on here as well, but I don't know where it is. Somebody has it. So I will see if I can give you guys some sound here. Oh, I turned the volume off. Hold on a sec. <clears throat> see if we can. What happened? Huh. Stand by. All right, we just time warped. We just time warped to the day when I can turn this up. And I ended up with this, which is cool. But this is what we're doing now. So, and it's because I did a whole pedal thing, but it was like really late at night. And I, I, I uh, it just doesn't sound like it. You know, so I'm gonna put this down and try to get a good angle so you guys can see the pedals here. Let me get a little closer. There you go. Now you can sort of see the pedals and see me and uh, everything, everything else. So first and foremost, my my twin tube. So here's the bass sound. And then this twin tube head here is kind of special because so I turn it on the rhythm, it's still clean the softer I play. But then the harder I play, it gets dirtier. And that's what I need this thing to do, okay? Now, then there's the lead channel here, which takes it, it takes it up a notch, you know? You know, that kind of thing. So, or like a... with it too. I'll try to do it this way. Uh, which you resident hero folk know I do a lot of bass chords. That's usually with that kind of lead channel. But it sounds good with the rhythm too. Like if I'm just playing something. Um, and that takes me over to the micropog, which kind of gives me the... So here it is, the micropog kind of... But what I'm usually using it for is with a little bit of drive. So that's where the pog, the micro pog kind of comes into effect. Uh, here's my time machine boost, just kind of just takes a P bass from, you know, a P bass you know dumps that tube in the amp a little bit harder so that's my time machine and then the big muff you guys know what big muffs sound like so that's the big muff and then the uh the chloral flange which is kind of pretty. Um, so for Resident Hero fans out there, time is nothing. So I will add 
a little bit of drive with that choral flange sometimes. with like drives and just to make sounds, you know, like sometimes just, just hitting a chord. So that's, I don't really use the wah for like funk or anything stupid like that, but that's my, that's my pedal. Hope you guys can hear it. And I hope it sounds better than it did the first time I recorded this. Update on this bass. It's been a couple days since the original recording. This bass now has Seymour Duncan uh, Rex Brown pickups in it with an active preamp. Bass trouble blend and then push pull passive active. All of my active basses can be made passive. That is like a, a big deal to me on the road in touring. So got to be able to if that active preamp goes down just boop hit it and then sometimes the house guy just wants a, a nice passive simple channel and i trust our house guy a lot so uh he he knows his stuff and he's good he always makes me sound good so there it is i hope i didn't just wake my wife up but i don't know we'll see we'll figure it out so if you guys got any questions about this stuff you rh fans out there oh wow so i just got this p base back and it came in my old case and on the case, I have, a lot of people don't know this, but I was Katy Perry's first bass player. But back then, her name wasn't Katy Perry. It was Katie Hudson. And I just looked over and I just saw this sticker on there. Old Katie Hudson sticker, Mother Tongue sticker, Nine Inch Nails, Earth Suit, Amazing Band, my buddy Josh, Pax 217. Uh, yeah, that's funny. I like literally just looked over and saw that. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy this. If you got anything down below, leave it. More shooting videos coming, guys. More motor. I'm, this bike, we're, we're, we're going on a cool trip on Monday. Um, and uh, I'm going to go, I got to go clean a gun and get ready for this match. But I thought some of you RH kids out there might enjoy this. Hope you did. If you got any questions on the gear, I'll try to do like a louder, you know, tone test thing and show you guys especially once the lull is back up um i'll i'll kind of give you guys maybe a more of a rig rundown properly so god bless y'all thanks so much for your time have a good night